Hey, Chelsea, how you doing? And we're going to talk to your, uh, your brother today. See what Brandon's... I don't know what he's doing. He's got a broom, like a regular house broom. And he takes it and he holds it like this and he holds it up over his head. And then he gets on it like he's riding it like, like a witch would. <laughs> I, he's not smiling about it though. I don't know what the hell that means. When he holds it over his head, it's kind of like, almost like a cheer, you know, like, hey. He's not being cheery about it though. That's unusual for him. It's like, and then he's like, he's riding a broom and then he starts using the broom. Have no clue what he's doing with this broom or why. Being a little cryptic here. He knows better. And then he comes over here on my right. He says, tell her I love her, tell her I love her, tell her I love her. She's been struggling a little more with this lately. Tell her I love her. Something about a no. Something about a N-O. About something you've been, that's been on your mind lately. Something you've been thinking about doing. Doing. He says no. Something you've been thinking about doing. You know, maybe we ought to come off of this thing where, uh, where they need to get more details. They just give me enough, so you should know what he's talking about. Sometimes they need to give a little bit more, I think. Up in the air. Something's up in the air. That's connected with the no, I think. I don't know why they always want to mess with my head and everybody else's. So he comes up behind me. I don't know if he's done this to you before or not. He puts his bony little chin right, right there and he rests it on my head. He's, he says, this one's for you. We're not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about anybody else except, and then he reaches his arm out over here to my left. And he's, he's touching your mom. He's, he's touching, touching your mom. And he's got his hand around. Do it again. He reaches out and grabs her around. This is my right arm. Reaches out and puts his hand around the top of her right arm. And he's not showing that she realizes it or whatever, but he said except for her. So, He says, did you see the light flicker? He's showing a light bulb, but he's not showing like what type of light, like like ceiling light or lamp light or he's not. Did you, did you see the light flicker? Just wait. <laughs> Just wait and see what I have in store for you. He says you have this big heart and, and it's like he's showing this big heart on the outside of your body and, and it's this freaking big. Be careful with it. He 
says this is associated with the NO, the NO. Boy, he's just flipping around today. And he's being more, uh, more serious than usual. Usually it's cartoon time. He said the word harbor, H-A-R-B-O-R, and then he shows me like body of water. It doesn't look like an ocean because I see some more land kind of over on the other side unless it'd be a little jag of land coming. But anyway, and there's a wooden, a wooden, I can't even see that it's actually a boat dock, but a wooden walkway out into the water. So like like something you might fish off of. Don't know why he's showing this. Showing the sun going down or coming up. There's always a reason for it. He says you need to find a place to put me. And then he goes back, you need to find a place to put me. And I think he means, I think he means mentally. Or emotionally, maybe, would be a better word. Not like physically. And then he shows a pair of work boots. He's just jumping from one thing to the other to the other. I don't know if he's trying to fit everything in. My ears have been ringing really, really loud lately. Tinnitus. So there's there's a difference between it, the ringing when you hear it in one ear and it's them and my tinnitus. And um, he came on and stuck his fingers in both of my ears. So I hope he's going to help me. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. It does bother me. It's it's. So he's trying to help. And I'm sure he's shown this before, but he's he's in the living room because I can see a TV behind him. And it's not carpeted, but it feels it's a living area. He's got his back to the TV, if that makes any difference, but he's sitting on the floor and he's playing with children. And I know he's shown that stuff before. I think there's a reason he's showing this. There's a little boy. Evidently done some kind of crafts or something. He's got what looks like um, oh, he's got, um colored paper. It looks like a heart that's been cut out of colored paper. But it also folds. And, you know, it might be a Valentine that you guys bought, but it also folds in. I don't know. That doesn't. And he opens it up, and it's like, and it's like a heart here and a heart here, and then it kind of looks like a heart in the middle too. Like I don't, I wouldn't know how to do that, but <laughs> I'm not very crafty. But anyway, Brandon's sitting there in front of him, with this like, you know, Indian style, and this little boy is opening up this. And he goes, he doesn't say Uncle Brandon. He says Uncle something that starts with a B. So he's got a shorter name for Brandon. Maybe he can't say it. Little boy with dark hair. And he's talking to him. He's sitting on the living room floor talking to him and playing with this heart, paper heart, which I'm assuming is a Valentine of some type. And they're actually interacting with each other because as Brandon sits in front of him, he opens it up and he sits in front of him and he points down He's at the B, the B for his name. He says, that's me. I can't tell for sure who the, who the boy is. But 
how they're all playing with him. It's funny, I don't remember having that much of an imaginary friend when I was a little boy, how long ago that was. But uh, it seems to be nowadays, it's more and more and more and more. The kids are okay with it and the parents are more accepting and that's what allows it to happen. We don't shut them, we're not shutting them down like we, like they did when I was little. You're crazy, you can't have an imaginary friend. Yes, you can. Okay, so he just said that I'm an angel in disguise, and he came up, put his arm around me, and I don't know if you'll see the wavy lines, leaned his head up against mine, he thanked me, oh, wait a minute, if he's going to talk to me, then I don't, let's not waste your time. Oh, this is, he said, I bring, I bring peace. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I bring peace to all these people. And it's like there's, it's like he's drawing, it's like he's drawing a circle and it lights up as his finger goes this way. But he says, and you have all of this left to do. You have all this left to do. And it's like, it was like it started glowing as his finger went around the circle. It just started glowing where he'd been with his finger. And then it stopped. And I'm going to say maybe a third of the way through around the circle. We have all this left to do. Just yelled at me to get busy. <laughs> I'm getting lectured again. It's funny how uh, when I start these readings, all of a sudden they, st they start lecturing me. So, We've got you open gonna get you while we can. Like I said, he's being pretty solemn this time. I expected him. he'd come in doing cartwheels that he didn't. He says, um, he asked me to watch out over you. And then he reached his arm out, touch mom. talking about this is about cherish an uncle now I don't have an uncle anymore um, he's talking to you cherish an uncle do you have do you have an uncle still here okay so far he's not saying oh god he's making me itch so far, he's not saying why, but he was taking cherries, like bean cherries, throwing them up, like you do popcorn and catching them in his mouth. And he says, when the cherries come out on the trees, he's not saying what about when the cherries come out on the trees. When the cherries get ripe on the trees. Something about in the spring, something about the time the cherries get ripe. And I don't remember what month seems like my cherries get ripe before any of my other trees. He's being cryptic today. And this is a couple times he's shown me. Oh, me an inch. It looks like a bus. But it looks like a toy bus. It looks like a little wooden painted toy bus but for one second it flashed like a school bus so I don't know if that was just so I could get the fact that it's a school type bus he flashed a picture like a real bus school bus he's shown it to me little and then when he showed the cherry tree now there's a kid under the cherry tree and I have a little um making me a ornamental cherry tree so he's showing me mine And there's a, he's making this picture bigger and bigger and bigger. 
I feel like I got the heebie-jeebies. But it, um, but there's, I almost want to say it's the same little boy with the heart, but I will not say that 100%. Little wooden bus. First it looked a little bitty. And now it looks bigger, but I think he's, they'll make it bigger, so I'll pay attention to it. And it's painted, and it's got little people painted in the windows, too. Don't know if that makes any difference. And this little kid is underneath the cherry tree and it's pushing this around. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But I think that's just so I pay attention to him because something about this bus is, is, making, a, is making a point of it. But it's not a real bus. I have no clue. I have no clue why he's showing it this way. He said, oh, he just told me, pay attention, Rhonda. I am paying attention. Not, he's not going to tell me anymore, I don't think. He's just showing me a picture again. Now it's just like a still picture that was moving. My cherry tree, this kid, this bus. Don't know. Maybe, maybe before the cherries come back and get ripe, maybe he'll say something else about it. Evidently, we don't have to worry about it till then. Okay, now he's, he always likes to sit Indian style. He's sitting by my chair. He's messing with my feet. This is what he's going to do to you. It's like he puts a like a, like a house shoe type. It doesn't really look like a shoe shoe or it's a soft shoe in way. Puts it on here. Well, I happen to have my legs crossed, so he's using my right foot. I don't know if it makes any difference. Puts it on my right foot. Then he takes it off and he throws it. Having trouble with your shoes, Chelsea? <laughs> Are you losing your shoes? I don't remember if he's played with the guys' shoes or not. And he's putting it back on. And as my left foot's sitting on the floor, he, my right, my, my left big toe, he's tickling the, the side of it. Because my foot's on the floor. So he, no, he says I can. So, he's playing with your feet. <laughs> As you have your legs crossed, he's going to try to um, hit your funny bone. You know how when you, you hit your funny bone below your knee, your leg kicks out. So if your leg all of a sudden kicks out, you're going to know why. So uh, watch the kids. Don't get them too close to you. you might be kicking one in the head as you're sitting there. He's finally doing something funny. Well, he's been solved. Okay, he's showing a picture of himself, and you're sitting there, and he's you're sitting, so he comes in from the right side, and kind of, kind of in this area, and he throws his arms, leans down, throws his arms around your shoulders, and he says, he's got his head up against your right side, but it's backwards, or he's puts his head backwards, so he's hugging you like a bear hug. But you're sitting, he's standing. Anyway. And he says, Thank you for putting up with my bullshit. You don't know how much it meant to me when I was here and how much it means to me now. You're still putting up with my bullshit. And that, no, now he's laughing hysterically, finally. He says, You got a lot more bullshit you're going to have to put up with. <laughs> I'm not done with you yet. Now he's bouncing around, dancing around. He 
he's excited about, about the bullshit that he's going to be able to do. <laughs> There's the boy I know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. But he's bouncing up and down, he's got a big smile on his face now. What else would you expect of me? <laughs> You're going to get it. Don't forget you need to shift me into another spot. Back to the beginning of this. And you're thinking in your emotions, you need to shift him over just a little bit. Um, he said it's time. Shift. It's what I want and what you need. I'm not exactly sure what he means, but I think he probably do. And as he's leaving, he has a balloon. I don't know that it's a birthday balloon or anything, but he pops it. He's popping a balloon. He says, you know I'm around. You feel me? You hear the things? You know I'm around. I love you, sis. There's a whole lot of gratitude thrown in there. Now he's back to being solemn again. A serious, just a serious. Maybe solemn is the word I should use. Okay. So he popped the wind. He's, he's sleeping. Thanks for being patient. I don't know. I seem to be getting all these hiccups all the time. But. Anyway. Y'all later. Much love to you guys. Rod Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator. Love you guys.